I now want to explain how to use double integrals to find the area of certain surfaces. So let d be a domain in R2. And let f be a function on this domain. Let's assume that it's differentiable. And I'd like to figure out how to find the area of the graph of f. Okay, so let's draw a picture. Here are the axes. So here's domain in R2, D, and over it we have the surface z equals f of x, y, or it will be under it if f is negative. Anyway, we'd like to find the area of this surface. So to find the area of the surface, we're going to divide D into small rectangles to get an approximation. Of course, we can't divide all of D into small rectangles. We'll miss some little fringe around the boundary, but we can get most of D as a bunch of small rectangles. So here's a small rectangle in D. So it moves some amount in the x direction and some amount in the y direction. So we'll say that these rectangles have um, x dis... There's one side, which is delta x. Let's just draw a picture like this. So it's... Um, it, the rectangle moves delta x in the x direction and delta y in the y direction. Now, let's look at the part of the graph that's over this rectangle. So it's approximately a parallelogram. Remember that a differentiable function is well approximated near any point by the tangent plane. So if you take some really small piece of the graph, it looks pretty close to the tangent plane at a point in there. So if you take a rectangle in the plane and look at the part of some plane that's over that rectangle, that will be a parallelogram. And what are the, what are these uh, side vectors of this parallelogram? Well, one side vector comes from the horizontal side of the base rectangle. So we move by um, delta x in the x direction and zero in the y direction. And then the amount that we move in the z direction is approximately fx times delta x. And then the other side vector, well, we don't move at all in the, z direct, in the, in the x direction, but we do move in the y direction by delta y. And then we move in the z direction by approximately fy delta y. Okay, so the part of the graph over a rectangle is well approximated by the parallelogram with these two edge vectors. Okay, so what is the area of this parallelogram? So the area of any parallelogram is the absolute value of the cross product of the two edge vectors. So the area of this parallelogram is the absolute value of the cross product of, and the first vector was delta x, 0, fx, delta x, cross, and the second vector is 0, delta y, fy, delta y. So let's work out this cross product. So the first component is 0 times fy, delta y, minus fx delta x times delta y. So that's minus fx delta x delta y. The second component is fx time delta x times 0 minus delta x times fy delta y. So I have minus um, delta x times fy delta y. And the third component is delta x times delta y minus 0 times 0. So it's delta x delta y. Now, every component is divisible by delta x delta y, so I can just pull out the delta x delta y, and that's positive, so I don't have to worry about the absolute value sign. So I get delta x times delta y 
times the absolute value of the vector minus fx comma minus fy comma 1. And the absolute value of this vector, it's a square root, sorry, this is not an equal sign. Um, so it's the square root of the sum of the squares of its components, 1 plus fx squared plus fy squared. So that's the area of the parallelogram. And then the total area of the surface, the area of the graph, is approximately the sum over all these rectangles of delta x times delta y times the square root of 1 plus fx squared plus fy squared. Now, if you take the limit as the size of these rectangles goes to zero, then intuitively we expect delta x and delta y to turn into dx and dy. So what you get is that the area of the graph is equal to the double integral over the domain d of the square root of 1 plus fx squared plus fy squared dA. So this is, in fact, correct. What I showed you is just sort of a sketch of why it's true. So you need some epsilons and deltas to really rigorously prove this. But that, that is the formula for the area of the graph. So let's do an example. Example, let's find, I mean, we've done this before, but let's find once again the area of the unit sphere. All right, so here's the unit sphere. Now, this is not the graph of a function. However, the northern hemisphere is the graph of a function. And the southern hemisphere is the graph of a function. So the, the northern hemisphere So I don't know why the northern hemisphere is always positive. It seems unfair to the southern hemisphere. But anyway, the northern hemisphere is the graph of the function f of xy equals the square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared over the unit disk. Because the unit sphere is the surface x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. OK, so the area of the sphere, well, by symmetry, the southern hemisphere has the same area as the northern hemisphere. So the area of the sphere is twice the area of the graph of f. So it's twice the double integral over the unit disk of the square root of 1 plus fx squared plus fy squared dA. So let's work out what this is. So you'll recall from earlier examples that fx is equal to minus x over z, which in this case is square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared, and fy is minus y over the square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared. So 1 plus fx squared plus fy squared is 1 plus x squared over 1 minus x squared minus y squared plus y squared over 1 minus x squared minus y squared. Now if I combine the fractions here, I can write this as 1 minus x squared minus y squared plus x squared plus y squared over 1 minus x squared minus y squared. And now a bunch of stuff cancels out. So we're left with just 1 over 1 minus x squared minus y squared. So now we can work out the integral. So the area of the sphere is 
is 2 times the double integral over d of the square root of that thing we just calculated. So the square root of 1 over 1 minus x squared minus y squared dA. Now, you'll probably notice that this is a good candidate for evaluation using polar coordinates. So let's do that. So d is the unit disk, so theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, and r goes from 0 to 1, and the function we want to integrate is the square root of 1 over 1 minus r squared, and then we multiply by the usual magnification factor r, and then dr d theta. So let's evaluate the integral over r. So this an antiderivative of this is going to be the square root of 1 minus r squared times some constant. So let's figure out what that is. So, so d dr of 1 minus r squared to the 1 half is 1 half 1 minus r squared to the minus 1 half times minus 2r. So that's minus what we want. And so the antiderivative here will be minus the square root of 1 minus r squared. And I have to evaluate this at r equals 1 and r equals 0. So evaluating this at r equals 1, I get 0. And evaluating at r equals 0, I'm sorry, I forgot the d theta here. And evaluating at r equals 0, I get minus 1, but I have to subtract that, so I add it back. So I get 1 d theta. And now, since what I'm integrating over theta is a constant, I simply multiply by 2 pi. So I get 4 pi, which is the correct answer.